This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Massachusetts, up to Steve Kravitz, up to... How's your tooth doing? Oh, what did they do? They added his tooth to my partial. Oh, really? Yeah. So now... <laughs> wait a minute. They added a tooth to your partial. Right. So you have a partial up there, right? You cl- right. You click it in every day or something? Yeah. Okay, but you have some on the bottom, too. The bottom, I have full dentures. Oh, I see. And up above, you have a partial. Right. But that's not permanently there. You have to take it out at night, right? Right, 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 right. Well, your glass is getting quite full. Yeah, no kidding. Which means you're a very positive person because you're... (laughs) My glass is half full. Your glass... No, it's not half full. It's really full. It's three quarters full. Are you getting used to the dentures? A little bit. This This is what old people talk about. So how are your dentures doing? Right, right, right. How are you eating? Yeah, I don't go for dentures. I I, I pay the real big bucks and I get the uh, implants. The implants. Oh yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want an area missing. Like I may have to lose this one here. So I think. Right. I'm having some problems with it, and if I do, it's going to be empty there for a while. But then the, I'll have that one. I'll have them definitely put one in. If it was like right. a really back tooth, I probably wouldn't do it. You know? Right. But with you, it's like the front, you know. Right. So, but you look good now. You look uh, smile. There we go. See, he's got a full smile and everything's fine. And uh, uh, the only problem is every night he has to take them out and put them in a jar. Well, that's the life. That's the life. Well, let me ask you, since this is a, an old people show anyway, we get old people calling it. We get old people watching it. You know, so we should talk about uh, some of the stuff about getting older. What is your um, uh, uh, denture uh, cleanser of, of preference? Oh, uh, just a generic one uh, from CVS. <laughs> the generic one. Right. Yeah. Um, so I got a gig on Friday. You had or have are gonna have? Have. 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 Oh, good. Yeah, this Friday. Where? Uh, VFW uh, post. Oh, really? Well, right. you got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere, that's right. How did you get that? Through a friend. Through a friend? Oh, okay. Right. What did he say? I know this VFW post that needs people? Uh, I know this guy who books a VFW post, and maybe I can get you in, and he got me in. Yeah, well, you know, don't. Uh, I guess you're limited to the material you can do, but you never did political anyway, right? No, no. Uh, so, how long has it been since you've gone on a stage and done your comedy? Uh, since 2018. Actually, it's a stupid question of mine because the stage is where you usually do your comedy. There you go. There you go. So Let's t- clarify things. 2018. Right. So, we're talking four years. Right. Okay. Do you remember the material? Uh, some of it. I, I remember the I remember the gist of the bits. I just hope I remember the jokes that go in between the bits. Oh, I see. Okay, so you you know you tell you tell a story and then there's jokes on the way to the punchline. Yeah. There's there's those jokes that fill in the the bit. Yeah. And I'm hoping I remember all the little nuances. Well, what I would do is emotionally think Borscht Belt. Right. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, for instance, what, it, it, I often said this that uh, the the important thing for a comedian to do is to have a great first line in your act, right? Some, something that tells brings people into your world, right? That's what I'm trying to decide is what to open up with. Yeah. 
What did you? Do I open up with baseball? Do I open up with Jesus? Do I open up with relationships? Mm-hmm. What do I open up with? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, let me see here. Let me think about it for a second. Uh, I would say with that crowd, baseball. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, That's did, what I'm thinking. Did you always have it when you were doing your act in your rate in your earlier career? Did you have a first line, something you did at the top of the act in order to get people to draw them into your world? Well, it was more like a um, a judgment act, whereas I knew which direction to go in. I would do a line, and then I would fill out the audience. It would like, can I go this way or can I go that way? Okay, all right. So it was like a line I threw out there just to get a feel of the audience more than them getting a feel of me. Mm-hmm. Because Bub's line always has been, uh, somebody stole my identity and now they have no life. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that sets up who he is. It really does. Right. You know. Right, uh, right, right. What, what I said is that a co- comedian has to do, and this is what I learned observing, because I never was a stand-up comic, uh, although I have gotten up on a stage and done a couple of minutes for one reason or another in front of a friendly audience so I could get away with it. Right, uh, a very friendly audience. Yeah, I mean, if I, uh, yeah, if I, I, because I could pull stuff about the radio show and jokes and people, were, I had already established who I was on the radio. Right. So when I got on stage, I, I could get them to laugh. But I always said that that beginning, that first thing you do is the most important because what you're doing as a comedian is you've got a, you've got a certain take on life, Right. Right. And you've got to educate them early in the act as to what Well, I'm thinking of my opening. I'm going to say, where are my baseball fans? I love baseball. Baseball is the only sport you can take a nap and miss nothing. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to open up with. That establishes you. That establishes right. your attitude, your, you know. But what it is, I said, the job of a comedian is that you're creating this alternative world. Right? Right. And now you're bringing them into it. Robin, right. W- Robin Williams had to do that. You know, Larry Bubbles Brown. Every comic I knew had to kind of do that. Uh, they, right. they couldn't just go on stage and just dive into their, their material without first saying to the audience, here's who I am. Right. You know. And here's a joke. Here's, I'm a professional comic. Here's a joke. Right. So are they paying you a lot of money for the VFW gig? No. <laughs> But that's all right. It's a gig. How much? A gig's a gig. Can I ask how much is no? Uh, nothing. Really? Yeah, I'm doing it for free. Okay. Well, you know, you've got to you got to get on the on this on the stage. Right. I want I want to get stage time and I want to get some a little uh, uh, recognition in the in the area. See, I was talking to Slayton last week. Okay. Right. And he's quit the business. He just quit. I know that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Right. Because we all look at Bobby and say, hey, he's one of the greatest comics that ever was. Right. And right. all of a sudden, he's not going to be doing that any longer. Did and he say why? Because he said uh, there are a number of reasons. COVID, first of all, kind of killed the clubs for a while. Right. But he said, for no, when he's going back to him, the clubs won't take him. Either because of the material he does or because he's too old. Right. You know, and the other day I was talking to him and not doing an interview, and and he said, by the way, you said something in the interview that we did. He says, and it holds true for me, too. I said, what? He said, you said that you had been, um, um, uh, you, you had been retired. You right. didn't retire, you'd been retired. And he so said, have I, he so said, have I, I've said, been retired. Yeah, he said the same things happened to me. He said, you know, I can't, see, he can't even go back to the punchline in San Francisco anymore. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he says, it's, you know, they they they, uh, yeah, they don't want to pay the money. Or they don't want, it's one thing or another. And he said, I made that club. Right. You know, and he did. Um, he was the guy who put it on the map. Right. And me. Uh, and, right. You know, I mean, for him to be kind of be turned down by the punchline, is amazing. I mean, the, it's ridiculous. 
the punchline at least a couple of times a year wanted to uh, have him headline their clubs maybe four times a year. Because right, and he, he would pack the place. Pack the place, and I think he still would. Well, but, I sort of lied. But, you know, I mean, there are younger comedians. They work cheaper. Right. Right? And they say, well, they relate more to the audience that's coming in now. Because, you know, let's face it. Slayton is an old Jewish comic. Yeah, but he would bring in his own crowd. I, I mean, think, Slayton's got enough recognition, at least in the Bay Area, to bring in his own crowd. Well, it's like saying Louis Black is an old Jewish comedian, or right. uh, you know, any number of people, and it's not—it's not true. It's not the—it's uh, uh, not the, the the way to do things. So, but anyway, he says it's it's getting more and more difficult. He says I won't play colleges because all they'll do is boo me. Right. You know, because they're so politically correct. Because, I mean, Slayton has one of those acts which, if you've never seen it, folks, is uh, he goes after Chinese people, he goes after women, he goes after... He, he goes after everybody. He goes after everybody, you know. He's, a, he's not an insult comic. I wouldn't call him that, but his material goes after everybody, you know. So anyway, it's just... Uh, you know, I mean, like you go go to a Chinese guy and say, "Yang among hang him." Did I just say something? You know, right. uh, lines like that. And and uh, it, he was brilliant. He was just brilliant. And um, it just uh, it, it. I told him. I said it breaks my heart because it's kind of like Yasha Heifetz, the world's greatest violinist, saying, "I'm never going to play the violin again." Right. You know what? You're not going to play the violin again. Are you nuts? You know, so uh, it it's kind of sad. I don't know if it's a permanent thing on his part because nothing's ever permanent with with Bobby, but it's not easy, and especially for a guy your age. I mean, they're going to look at you at a club. They asked you for an audition tape. Right, 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 right. How ridiculous is that? Well, I mean, you know, come on. How many movies have you made? How many uh, clubs have you played in your lifetime? And they want right. an audition tape. They should say, "Hey, you're a pro. Come on, do your act right. here." Or get it, come on over, and on Monday we'll put you on, and let's see what you do. Right, right, exactly, exactly. You, you know, like I always thought audition tapes sucked. I, 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 I could never do an audition. I was terrible at auditioning. If you, right. if you wanted to audition me, have me send you an audition tape for a radio job. You'd listen to the thing, and you just go, huh? Right. And what would happen is. People would say to me, "Well, would you like to come and uh, and do a day on the on the air here and see how you how you are?" And I said, "Right, no, I'll do a week." I right, said, there you go, I exactly. Said, I said because Monday you're going to hate me. Right. I said Tuesday you're going to begin to wonder. By right. Wednesday you're beginning to say, "Guy ain't bad," and by Friday they're going, "How much do you want to work here?" Right, you know, right, and, and, right. That, and that was always the case with me. And I did that in San Francisco with KMEL. I said, give me a week. And the first day they said, we, do we want to do the rest of the week with this guy? You right. Know? And by the end of the week, they offered me a job. Right. So it's, it's it, 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 unfortunately, that's the same thing that happened to me in Florida where I went down for a week. And by the end of the week, they offered me a job. And I took it because I needed it because I was out of work at, at the Live 105. And uh, then I had to go down to Miami, which was the worst experience of my life. Why is that? Oh, God. I mean, there is, I, I keep going and mentioning this often on this show. There is a prevailing attitude, or there was at the time in, in Miami, of just solid 100% meanness. It was just the people there were mean. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, and I, I've i never seen it like that. You know, I talked about it the other day. I talked about, I think, the bubbles uh, in a thing I did with them the other day. That I went down there, and the guy who went on after me was the most popular talk show host in all of uh Miami. Miami. He had been there for years. He'd been number one. He was making like five hundred thousand dollars a year. He was. Oh really? He was king of the beach. Okay. Uh, and I go in there and I start doing my show, and he starts putting me down on his show. 
saying this guy sucks when's he gonna leave is this station and I hope the station doesn't hire him blah 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 you know and um, they hired me because they wanted to kind of put him in his place a little bit right you know it was you know when you go to a radio station you expect that the people across town are gonna say you suck right okay but the people who work around you are there to support you because they're there to support the entire station and you say that's right have you heard this that's new right. guy Alex he's terrific this guy didn't do that and on top not of, very professional of him on top of it I'll tell you something I'll tell you something that would endear you for the rest of my life your life is if I had saved your life right right sure. no matter what you thought of me before I saved your life how would you feel about me sure I get it okay so I'm, I'm at this station this one morning, uh, going to work, and uh, he was on before me, excuse me, he went on before me, not after me. He went on before me, and I walk into the studio, and he goes, we go into a commercial break, and he says to me, last night I couldn't sleep and my arm was hurting. He said, I wonder what that is. I said, what that is, is maybe it's a heart attack. Right. I said, I would immediately stop the show now, give it, have somebody else do it, get yourself to your doctor. And sure enough, he had had a heart attack. Oh, really? Yes. And they were able to then pump him full of all kinds of stuff and everything like that. And he survived and lived. He lived another, I don't know, 15 years or so. Okay. And I saved his life. Do you right. think that prevented him from putting me down? No. No, made my life a living hell. You know, so it, it, it that's the kind of town it was. And it's not wasn't just these people that I was working with. There was a team that worked after me that was double teaming him in just giving me a bad time. Oh really? Yeah. So What I mean, did the station manager have to say about all this? He wasn't happy about it, but you know, this was his star. Right. And these were some guys who were already there, so he had to play like, you know, be the UN. Right. You know. Uh, but then uh, I got pulled over coming out of work. We was on a causeway. I got pulled over by the police. For what? Uh, they get, tell me, get out of the car. I get out of the car. They then start really making me, scaring the crap out of me because now another police car pulls up and they got a police dog who gets out with his guy snarling at me. Okay. Would that terrify you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm shitting my pants now. I don't know what the hell. I'll, uh, what, are you going to give me a ticket for going too fast? Isn't this a little... A little know, over the top. A little over the top? No, well, you know. I just, I, I went, I went nuts on this deal. I just couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't take it. All right. Okay. Uh, and it was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. And it turned out finally that the reason they pulled me over is they said, we hear you have bad things to say about the police department. Really? Yes. And I said, and they were lying in wait for me. Okay. I said, no, I've never talked about the police department, which I hadn't. Right. I said, well, we got a call that you did. What? You just got a call and you're doing this because you just got a call? Right. And uh, they said, okay, well, we're giving you a ticket for not having, not having Florida license plates because I still had my Texas license plates. Okay. Oh, wait, no, it was a Texas, no, California license plates. Uh, and I said... Uh, I think I'm going to get out, of, and I thought to myself, I'm going to get out of this town before I have to put a, a Florida license plate on this car. Right. You know, and that was enough for me. I mean, I was terrorized. I went home, told my girlfriend who was living with me at the time, I said, we're packing up, we're getting out of here by tomorrow. And I went into right. the radio station, and I said, I quit. You know, that's it. You know, and I left. You know. I don't blame you. And for the next five years, this guy that went on before me was still putting me down. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was. It, it, I didn't have a chance. Didn't have a chance. Right. 
So tell me I'm supposed to have a wonderful, warm, and fuzzy feeling about a station where that happens. Right, you know? right, right. And, and, and so that's why I hate Florida. I just, it just was horrible, you know. And, and then it's a bunch of people waiting to get into a restaurant at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for the early bird special. <laughs> well, it's old people and their parents. Well, you know what? I did pass by, what was it called? Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. I mean, people would be able to call me up from Miami and tell me exactly what the restaurant was. But they were all lined up, and all of a sudden, I pass by it, and there's an ambulance. <laughs> and they're hauling somebody into the ambulance. And all I could think of is that one of the people in line was probably thinking, oh, well, now there's a place for us. Right, you know? right, right, and, right. And I then wondered how many ambulances show up to this place every single day, because it was the place everybody went for the 4 o'clock early bird special. Right. Which I... I, I don't understand eating at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Can you? No, me neither. In fact, before I married Marjorie, I couldn't think about eating before 6 o'clock at night. Now we eat at right. 5.30. Okay. It, it, that's almost acceptable. Right. Yeah. Right. But really, I never used to eat dinner till 10 o'clock at night when I lived in New York. Because, you know, none of the good, none of the good restaurants were open before, like, 9. Right. You know the place, where was it? Was it Spain? Yeah, Spain. They don't serve dinner till 10 o'clock at night in restaurants. Is that right? What, what, what it is is they have this wonderful thing in Spain, which I'm sure you've heard of, called siesta. Yeah, yeah right. Now, siesta, I think, socially, was the greatest idea ever. And what the idea was, excuse me, I'm belching here. What it was was uh, a, a thing where you went home in the afternoon between, it, it started about 12.30 and went till about four, okay? Maybe one to four, some, something like that. One to 4.30, I think it was, okay, was siesta. And it was originally intended that, you know, we take a break during the heat of the day, right. okay, which was very wise, and you can go home and fuck your wife. Right? Well, I'll take a nap. When you first get up, you don't have the energy, and late at night, you're at a lower ebb, but at that time of day, you're at the peak of your sexual abilities. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so really, it was set up so you could go home and fuck. That's really what it was. Yeah. And Good I, idea. And I enjoyed that, but what people did with it was they would hold parties in the afternoon, and people would come over and party and so on. Or you would go to lunch. Or, uh, uh, well, actually, you couldn't go to lunch because the restaurants weren't open. Right. Okay. Uh, but And they also, also kept one pharmacy in the town open in case somebody really needed medicine. Right. Well, I think that I know that's a law in the States that a pharmacy has to be open 24-7. Yeah. But in, in Spain, only one had to stay open during siesta. Right. Okay. So... Uh, I love the idea of siesta. I thought it was just a wonderful idea. It was a social idea. It was a sex idea. It was a lot of good things all rolled into one. So when you're doing siesta and you're having your lunch and it's going from like 1 o'clock to 4.30, somewhere in that period of time, are you ready to eat dinner at 6? No. So right. no restaurant would open till 10 o'clock at night. And wow. Yeah. And people also would go to work at like 8 o'clock in the morning, work till 1, then come back at 4.30 and go until, say, 8. Right. So going to a restaurant, at it, it, it changed the clock for the country. So I hope you I know in, in France, lunch was the big meal of the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and dinner was a... Was a uh, or supper or whatever they called it was a very small light dinner. Right, right, which is healthier for you. Okay, but all your big food was like at lunch. You, right. You, you, know, you bring out the oysters and you bring out the steaks and you bring out all of that. Right. And uh, so yeah, yeah, but that, that I, I did you you found that probably pretty nice, right? Yeah, I, I did. did. It it uh, it made a lot of sense to you, I'm sure. Sure. You know, uh, and uh, it, it, 
people are so much more civil in a lot of other countries than here. Well, they, they consider us animals here. Well, we are. We are. We have no couth. We have no class. We, no. We suck. Uh, Steve. We have no culture. But let's talk about that next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Kravitz has joined us. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. Thanks, folks. Okay. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey there. Okay, Steve Kravitz, the great Steve Kravitz. We love Steve Kravitz. Steve Kravitz is the best. Yeah, he and Bubbles and Durst and even uh, Stephen Pearl, who we haven't talked to in a while. We talk to more people, except we get all these things recorded. Uh, I, I may have to start uh, cutting Phil down to once every other week so that I can get some other interviews in because he isn't, we can't get him until Thursday anyway. So uh, it wouldn't, I think, disappoint him if uh, we did it every other week. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, here we go. I'm sorry if a lot of you wondered where I was at the very beginning. I started the show off without all the ads and everything because I had a hard time getting on tonight because all of a sudden my camera went blank. But I think I figured out what it was. But anyway, we solved the problem. So that's all that mattered. And now I have to blow my nose. Wait a minute. Let me turn down the mic here. go okay ah oh. I needed that okay let's uh, let's bring uh, some people waiting actually to get on tonight I guess everybody's ready to talk their brains off uh, anyway here they come ladies and gentlemen look there's uh, there's Jeff and there's uh, Josh and there's Charlie and Alan is somewhere to be found, but there he is. Okay. I'm having an ice cream. I know you don't like me to eat on the show, so I'll come back. <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 go ahead. You can have that. That, does, oh, that doesn't you, count sir. as eating. You don't chomp on that. You know, you don't make lots of uh, noise with it. Hello, everybody. How are you uh, this evening? Good. Yeah, I had some trouble getting on tonight. Uh, it always happens on Mondays. And suddenly all my cameras went blank and I had to reboot everything here. Uh, but we got on, not uh, as we normally do on the half hour, but after we usually run the spots, it's about 25 of them, we got on on time. So. I, you I, know, it's good that it only happens on Mondays. Today's Wednesday. Wednesday, rather. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm, I'm giving up. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, Josh, seeing you on a Monday at... <laughs> on a Wednesday. Yeah, I'm <laughs> off for a few days. You're off for a few days. Okay, what's the occasion that you're off for a few days? I have the plague, so I've been banned from my workplace. Uh -oh. Oh. Wait a minute, you have COVID? Yeah, me and my, my wife does too. Well, oh. uh, that would go without saying, wouldn't it? Because if one of you yeah, got it, the much. other one would get it. Where'd you get it? Work, do you think? I don't really know, to be honest with you. But you've got all these shots and everything, right? Yeah, I had the the main uh, vaccines, yeah. Yeah, okay, and then how are you feeling? I'm okay. I, I just have really bad uh, congestion. It gives yeah. me a headache, uh, kind of bad here and there. Right now it's actually okay. And uh, Yeah. I haven't, I haven't had a fever. Um, I have some cough here and there. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty mild. I mean... Uh, it's been a little strange. I've had really bad, like, uh, fatigue, just, like, like really, really tired. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went to bed yesterday at, like, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> wow. Just weird, you know. So, but, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm okay. So, I, you, I actually went to work today because I didn't know I had it until late today. And, and um, how did you find out you had it? I took a couple uh, tests here at home. We have a variety that we had collected, and uh, so I took a couple from different, manufacturers and all that and they were all positive so yeah and and i figured because you know i have symptoms and, and she was positive a couple of days ago like sat saturday morning or something like that so um i mean i pretty much knew it was coming so yeah yeah well you, I, uh, you're, actually i think am i right guys but i think this is the you're the first guy here on our program who's actually come down with covid so yeah. did tony have it what 
Didn't Tony have it? We don't know. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I mean, I went in today, actually, and I went to my office, and I stayed in there the whole day and didn't really have to talk to anybody, and I got a bunch of stuff done, and then I left, and it's yeah. nice to come back. So. Yeah, well, anyway, I guess you're going to be okay. It doesn't sound like you're... Yeah, it's not. It it gets really bad for like an hour or two, and then it's not, you know, that it's just, it, yeah. so far, it's not bad. My wife's was... She's still, she's actually still is testing positive, even though it's been like five or six days or whatever. Um, hers was so far about the same. It wasn't bad. She got a fever, but not, not like a yeah. really bad one. Yeah. Anybody else here know anybody that's had COVID? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Umpires. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. One of my volunteers from Habitat called me this afternoon and said that uh, uh, he probably had been exposed to somebody by somebody at church yeah, yeah. a lot of people uh, are, uh it's the end of the season where kids are graduating from college and high school and whatever and so uh, they invite all of their families or whatever to come over and one person gives the whole because a lot of them they only take like one pill of the thing and then they don't take the second one and the third one yeah well uh, uh, Josh has had two shots so he should be okay you know yeah. how recent were those shots by the way last year um, you know I had one in like August and then another one right after yeah. you know whenever you're supposed to after that you should be still safe yeah I, I mean, like I said I have a case but I mean but I'll um, tell you after this is over yeah. go out and get your boosters because you can get it again oh yeah you know I asked Jimmy Kimmel he got it twice in uh, four weeks or something mm. and I <laughs> think uh, uh, Stephen Colbert the same thing happened with him yeah. Uh, you, you you had your hand up, Vernon. Oh, I was just saying I've had four shots. You've had four shots. Yeah, I've had I've had, I've had the four. Shots. I've had the four shots yeah. too. No. Yeah. Uh, but you know we're old farts. They're finding people that are vaccinated with the first two shots but not boosted with Omicron version two. I guess is what this is or something. They're finding those people have a higher propensity for long COVID. Hopefully you don't get that, Josh. Really? Yeah, you could you could be weak and tired for months on end or whatever. So, you know, it's uh, yeah. Alex is right. When you're over this, go get a. Boot. If they wanted me to go get a shot every week, I would do it. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm the same way. You know, I mean, right now it's every six months, and you know. But I'm like you, Alex. I haven't got it. Our family hasn't got it, so it's sort of uh, weird. And you've been traveling all over the place, Brian. Yeah, you've been. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to get it. You've been on, <laughs> even on airplanes and everything. Cruise ships on the the peach tree uh, <laughs> ship. Peach uh, tree dish ship. Oh, peach tree dish. Yeah, that's peach what uh, that's tree. what um, uh, was Marjorie. Uh, yeah. What's her name? Said. Yeah. Yeah. It's so you know Facebook is so funny when there's a gaff like that. You, you, you know, I'm at work and just scrolling on Facebook. All of a sudden, I see this stuff, peach tree dish. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell happened? And then, then you go and find out the real news after you see all the memes, you yeah, know. It's so a, it's a real peach so tree dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I think that we're probably going to find that most people we know get it at one time or I'm just waiting to get it, you know. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm waiting. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't go out that much. I haven't taken that many walks. You, you uh, definitely don't want it, Alex. I, you know, I think we're all on edge waiting to see if we're going to get it. But I think you need to be extra careful based on age and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. People, people in your age group tend to not survive this thing. And, you know, I, uh, I won't say that. I, okay, don't say it then. So. I would just like to recognize Tony's clean haircut, man. Are you going oh, out no, somewhere no. or what? You got a date no, or something? I did it because, no, I actually was starting to work out again, and it was getting too bushy and and curly, so it was bothering me, so I got to shave. 
Oh, you what did you do for the summer? Now, Tony, did no. you did you have COVID or you don't know? No, I had it. My mom passed away from it. I have the sheets that when I test the positive. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I was tired for like two or three days. Well, then I and figure. I, I figure. Like Josh, we, I slept in the afternoon, like he was saying. It sounds to me like Josh may have birth. gotten Josh may have gotten it from you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. I mean, yeah, I, I just you know don't get too close to your camera there, Josh. Uh, we don't want, don't want to catch it. You know? One mask. Uh, yeah, our our building doesn't wear masks anymore, but the <clears throat> the bigger manufacturing buildings uh, next door and the door down they they still wear masks and they have to be tested antigen tests in the morning mm -hmm. uh, when they get in or before their shift. And then every once in a while, so Lodi is doing this this week, is uh, they do a PCR test just to sort of wipe everything out. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to do that mandatory uh, next week. And then we'll all do PCR tests and they sort of weed out some of the people and then they yeah. go back to antigen every day. So what, what brand test kit do you guys use at work? Oh, it's the uh -huh. they're a small box thingy. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to make a joke. No, here, no, it's, it's not. The business. No, it's not ours. We oh. we we make too much revenue than to give it away for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Our stuff's too expensive for our own. Yeah, that's the one. Now, Ray, didn't you yeah. say Ray? Didn't you say you had COVID? No, no, my wife had it very early on there when it first started. Um, so you know, if I had it, which is a high probability, I just didn't have symptoms because she was in the house, super sick for two weeks, and. I didn't stay away from her or anything because we didn't really know what it was. Uh, a lot of people didn't know uh, what so it was. Maybe I did have it, but I didn't have any symptoms, so yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, I think uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I hope I'm safe. You know, I've got all the uh, yeah. all the shots you, and everything. You got your booster too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I got both boosters. Oh, you're good. And and I swallowed a uh, a bottle of bleach just to be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So. What, what's with that haircut, Tony? Who gave that to you? I went to Ed Grimley. Did that. Ed Grimley give you that haircut? Well, I'm going to tell you, my sister was bothering me because it was getting bushy. She said, your mommy would kill you if she saw your hair like this. So I had to get a haircut. It was over more. It was just getting too itchy and when I was sweating and all when I was walking around. We were going for our walks. And as I got to get, so I just got a buzz cut one day. I usually do it for the summer. I get it all off. No, well, his first yeah. girlfriend ever requested him to cut his hair. No, I always cut my hair like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to uh, Tony, move your ca camera down a little bit so we get your full face. There we go. Oh, oh that's scary. See, that's so much better. Hey, Alex, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, of oh, course, oh, you got to oh. ask me a question. You're always asking questions. Yeah, I was in Costco with my sister today. I was getting some... Did, did that... The lady who had a crush on you, the actress, was that Selma Blair? She put a biography and I was reading it in the store. What or was that, Linda? Remember you said the one from The Exorcist was it Selma? Oh, Linda, Blair? Linda Blair. I, I, I went. Blair. I went out on a date with Linda Blair once, but you know. Oh, I got the Blairs confused because I saw. Well, it was nice. She was a real head turner, so you Ooh. know. It was, ah, ah, ah. Oh, head turner! From Exorcist. I got that one. But, but, but I, but, and, oh, Didn't oh, she come? What? Didn't she go to one of the Breakfast of Bennett's or something? One of those, I'm right? Trying she went to one of I'm those. trying to remember. Yeah, I, did, I was at that one. I was at one of those that she went to. She yeah, well, I think that was when I went out on a date with her. Mm. And, yeah, because that was that part of it. Part of it. Part of a thing that we had going that I said that my uh, people were. Oh, hi there, Charlene. She just uh, jumped in. I don't know if I even. How'd you get in? I didn't even see you there. Well, hi. I don't know. I snuck in. <laughs> anyway, no, with, with Linda Blair, uh, I I had said once somebody we were doing a thing on the air, and it was, you know, what's the what what what's the thing you hate to admit? And I said that I really would like to go out with Linda Blair. So then it became a joke and became a joke. So finally, when she came to the show, we we arranged this whole thing where I went out on a date with her. So. <laughs> But then over the years, oh, at least having her on by phone and things like that, we kind of became friends. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, and she's uh, still above ground. Yeah, oh yeah, she's still above. Yeah. Ground. Oh, okay. She still looks pretty hot, I think. Uh, right? She, she look looks good. still yeah. looks good, yeah. and she she has devoted most of her animals. life to animals. <laughs> yeah, to animals. Uh, and and that's why I figured she would like me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, uh, and. Uh, I always found her I always found her fun and intelligent and so on. Um, 
The only, you know, I never went out, it's funny, I never went out with any celebrities, to tell you the truth. And the only one that I came close to going out with because she wanted to go out with me and I wanted to go out with her, but we just didn't live in the same town and could never quite get it together, and then she died. Was, uh, That's Wendy Williams, Wendy O. Williams, right? No, no. No, I didn't. Oh, I, I thought it was her because no. you told like a story like that. Marilyn Chambers. Oh, that's right. That's you the one, say yeah. that. Yada yeah, yada yada. Humming, before humming, she humming, died, humming. you wish that you had uh, gone out with her, right? Well, I we had always. We, she mm -hmm. called me and she said, "You know, really, I'd like to get together with you." You know, she said, "I like you, and I'd really like to get to know you better." Because we had hung out somewhat in San Francisco, and then she had to go. And she called me and she said, "Really, the next time in San Francisco, let's let's go out on a proper." proper date and I said you're on you know and then the next thing I know she's dead <laughs> oh that was bad yeah you too know, bad that, that's my luck with dates don't ever say you want to go out with me folks you know <laughs> it, it could cause a not problem not much chance of that here uh, I used to have the I used to have the after breakup with the ex with a girlfriend yeah uh, they would end up the next guy they'd get married to <laughs> I've heard of guys like that, right? Yeah, like four, four, four ex-girlfriends. All of a sudden, right after when we we separated, all of a sudden the next boyfriend they had, they, they got they, married. The guy married him. Yeah. Woo! They, they Thank God I missed all them. Was, they thought he was going to be as good as you, Brian. <laughs> You're like a marriage fluffer. Yeah, yeah. A marriage yeah. fluffer. Very good. <laughs> I'm right. I'm writing a stand-up. That's going to be one. I got like six jokes so far. I'm gonna to have to add that one. Well, you're gonna you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna have to get a few more than that to get a tight twenty. You know. I know, but I only start I only started like a few days ago, so oh. I'm just oh, okay. adding like one a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotta go write that down before I forget. Well, you know what it is? I uh, over my life I've just ad libbed some funny lines, but I never wrote them <clears> down, so I never had an act. That's you know? the problem. You got to remember to write it down, or you're going to forget it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, unless it's a joke that I keep telling over and over, and well, you guys know that, so you know. I, I like what you said uh, in the intermission between uh, your your last guest uh, having somebody only twice a month. Nah. <laughs> well, having uh, uh, Phil on Phil. twice a month. Phil twice a month. Yeah, well, he, he finds his uh, his photo club more important. He keeps, uh, so that's good. Just to have him on. Uh, yeah, when he's not doing his photo club, beating up on old yeah. men for their I mean, photographs. Yeah. Just, just, just don't cut his pay. Give him the same pay, though. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm going right. to I'm, I'm bring up something here that a lot of you are going to consider trivial, but then after I kind of explain why I don't consider it trivial, you might agree or disagree with me. Uh, but today, the big news was there was a oh, verdict man. in oh, the man. Amber Heard, yeah. Johnny Depp trial. And a lot of people go, oh, you know, you watch that, ah, it's so trivial, <laughs> you know, whatever. And yet, after it was over, I looked at Marjorie and I said, you know, this is a fairly important decision here. Because for the longest time, guys have been on the ropes because all they had to do was be accused by a woman and automatically they lost their job nobody wanted to have anything to do with them and they always continually believe the woman Ooh. well there was some woman in, in women in this world who took advantage of that and figured they could lie through their teeth and everybody would believe them and they usually did a lot of people got hurt by that so finally this is a a decision which i think now puts not women on notice, but women who would wish to lie on notice. Uh, and, and that, that you just, it isn't going to just be accepted that the man is guilty of something because you said so. She's a horrible actress. She well, can't that, even act. That like has nothing proper. to do with it. Uh, you know, Johnny Depp isn't that great either, okay? You know, uh, but I mean, uh, she. Uh, I, she was what I think it was a horrible person, and she, you know, she what she did, and 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 the feminists out there should be really bothered by it. The Me Too people, is that she trivialized, uh, you know, uh, spousal abuse uh, by lying about it and being caught at it because she was a very bad liar. 
And so, you know, I, I don't want this to affect that we don't believe women when they say something, but mm. we don't, shouldn't believe them exclusive of the men who might deny it. <clears throat> and that we should look at it un, without, without uh, uh, being uh, prejudiced about it and just, uh, you know, what, what do you think, Charlene? You're the only woman here. Defend women who lie. <laughs> No, I was just thinking in my head that it's kind of like when they put somebody that, that's innocent in prison, like that's kind of what she was trying to do to Johnny Depp, say, oh, no, it was him, it was him, and he's guilty, he's guilty. So it's it's good that they have this verdict that shows that she was lying and all that because it does trivialize it, you're right. But what happens is women, it, you know. the pendulum really swings on something like this, and for the longest time the pendulum had swung towards women that a woman right. could accuse a guy of something, and without a trial, without anything, they would automatically mm -hmm. be considered guilty of that because, oh, it's a guy, and, and we have to believe women above all else. Well, that gave certain women who were liars a license to lie. You know, Alex, and, I don't know. And that's not good. I think Yes, I think we should well, consider the woman, and we should I'm, have heard... I'm thinking, like, Alex, remember it Lizzie Borden... They didn't believe that because she was a woman, she could take the act because she wasn't. So she probably did kill her mother and father, but she got off on a thing like she's a woman and she's too weak. Did she know? get off? I don't. Oh remember. yeah, that she got. Yeah. You know, she never was prosecuted. What what are, what, are, what do the rest of you people think about what I'm saying? Yes, uh, Alan. So the the women that I know think that she lied on on the stand and. Uh, they also think that you know this might be a turning point where some of the courts and and, and uh, industry uh, doesn't believe the women right off the top without more proof. Well, I mean, also you know, uh, Johnny know De Johnny right Depp wasn't in this for the money. He no. was in this to get vindicated. Yes. And I think today he yes. got vindicated. You know, yes. I think the he. Is she can't afford to pay the bill. Well, I don't. I, I, I quite frankly, I don't think he's going to try and collect it. Okay, I think he's going to take what he's what he's got and, and leave with it, and hopefully, you know, hope that maybe she tries to pay some of it off, but she doesn't have that kind of money, you know. And the lawyers to get forty percent anyway. Yeah. And the lawyers, I yeah. Uh, I, I think she was just trying to. Well, oh, no, it all depends. Uh, the lawyers don't get forty percent. Uh, not a judge, no, if you if you're paying for your lawyers, they're not working on contingency. A pro bono so you, so you get everything, but yeah. then they also get a lot too because now you owe. I mean, how much does Johnny Depp owe his lawyers in this trial? Thing went six weeks. Oh. Huh? What were you going to say, Charlie? I think it's interesting that I yeah. think it's interesting that Johnny Depp sued for fifty million and got fifteen. She countersued for a hundred million and got two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and, she didn't and, prove her case. And actually, she doesn't get two. That two is taken off the top of, of what. Uh, uh, if he owes her that, then she does. She only owes him like. I think they said that he only is going to get the in the state of uh, where was this Georgia where they did this case or Arkansas? I'm trying to remember where it was. Maybe it was Arkansas. That is a law that you can't have the punitive, punitive damages be more than something like three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they gave him five million in punitive damages. So really, he's not going to get all that, but he is going to get something like ten million. Is that like restitution, Alex? Well, it's what he sued for as damages to his career. Uh, and uh, I, I honestly she defamed him, right? She, yeah, she, it was defamation. Like, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, he, and I think it did hurt his career for a while. Yeah, I think this verdict today, and the whole case, has kind of redeemed him in the eyes of the public. And I think he's highly employable right now. I mean, if I were a movie company, I'd be going after him. You know, I think he just wanted to work again. He yeah. he got kicked off like. Three movies, I think, because yeah. of this. Yeah, he lost. Uh, I mean, yeah. if she lost money because she was not in the next Aquaman, maybe she lost a million or two million. He lost yeah. something like 
20, 30 million because they didn't do the next Pirates of the Caribbean and there's one thing after another and before it was, he couldn't get work. So this kind of, this is why he did it and I think he's gonna, he's gonna be getting work out of this now. But I just think it was a very important case from the standpoint that up until now, if you were a guy accused by a woman, you never had a chance, you know, never. And I think this maybe at least turned the table slightly on that and that women are going to have to go into court not just saying he did it. They're going to have to go in and say, here's how he did it, when he did it, and, you know, make a good case. And especially, unlike Amber Heard, not sound like they're lying. You know, her case was very flimsy. Yes, Jeff? I'm not that familiar with the thing that you're talking about, but I, I think the number of women who are attorneys are much, much higher than has been in, in the past. I also think that that a man or a woman really have to be very honest about what they're saying, or at least very clear about what they're saying. And the attorneys have to add Mm -hmm. a different level of, uh, of uh, making these decisions. Mm -hmm. And of course, the judges are also women now. Well, so, I'll tell you, the, the, the star of this trial was a woman. Mm -hmm. It was one of Depp's lawyers. And, uh, not Isn't he dating her now or something? No, he wasn't. What, no. Oh, that was just a, no. What's the world coming to where they're allowing judges to be lawyers? <laughs> I'm, joke, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Yeah, I, know, but, uh, I know your wife's a lawyer. Yeah, Jeff. but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that uh, um, uh, <laughs> this woman, I can't remember her name right now offhand, uh, it became a big star out of out of this trial. I mean, people really paid attention to her. She's the next F. Lee Bailey. Can, can I talk, please? Can I talk, please? Uh, Do you mind? Sorry. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, sorry. She. Um, to begin with, she is gorgeous. <laughs> Can I say that? And she just is whip smart. And uh, everybody kind of, uh, kind of, um, you know, took to her, you know, uh, and and enjoyed the fact that she was a really good lawyer. And she was perfect for the for Demp, Depp's defense because whenever Amber Heard was up there, guess who who did the cross examination on her? This woman. Because it would have looked bad if it was like some male lawyer beating Amber Heard up, but it didn't look terrible for uh, this uh, this woman to do it. So it, it was the she was the perfect lawyer for the case. She was just terrific. But uh, Camille Vasquez, huh? Her name was Camille Vasquez. But you're right, Camille Vasquez, and and she was just yeah. whip smart, whip smart, great uh, at uh, at uh, doing uh, cross examination and so on. You didn't watch any of this, did you, Josh? No. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting legal case, but I today when it was finished, I, I just said, you know, there is something in this trial that's very important. And the very important part of this trial is that, you know, that finally we're starting to say, well, just because a woman accuses a man of something doesn't make him automatically guilty. And I think that that's, that's a very important precedent to have set. Uh, and, yeah. And, they're, yeah. and by the way, I've, I've been reading, very few people have been coming out, or women have been, even women have been coming out and saying, no, this was like a guy beating up on a woman, you know, in court. There was none of that. Most people say, I watched this thing. She was lying, you know. Josh, you were going to say something? Well, not, nothing major. I mean, I, you know, defamation is usually hard to to prove and hard to get through. Uh, you know, just the, the Sarah Palin case recently is another example. She's tried to sue people for defamation, I think, more mm -hmm. than once. And each time, it, I mean, it gets a, a hearing because everything basically gets a hearing. But they, they pretty much dismiss it, you know, and sort of scold her in the process like they did this time. And, uh, you know, so this case went all the way to a trial, of course, and then, and so it's fairly rare. I mean, I don't, you know, 
really know what to say about how women handle the way they make their accusations because that's a tough subject but you know maybe it'll have some effect on how it's done i mean you know the i guess the lesson might be if something like that happens to you Mm -hmm. you you know you you need to try to contact the authorities you know as soon as possible immediately i mean and i know that a lot of people are going to say well this happens all the reasons that women do not and i'm you know on board with that i'm just saying if you can you've got to tell somebody right away because you know as time passes and then yeah these things come out and then you choose to you know like she did she goes to the washington post and you know they publish they let her write whatever she wants and they publish it which you know by the way is a whole other part of something that you could talk about i mean in some ways what does the washington post have allowing her to write an op-ed full of these accusations where she doesn't really have any proof yeah i mean that's a decent question i guess i didn't read her op-ed so i mean that's what i'm saying i'm just speaking broadly you know but that's probably a question you could ask too right is you know but the washington post is they're reactionary like everyone else and they're Mm -hmm. trying to get people to you know not just read their newspaper but you know they are pushing something that they they sort of have an agenda they're pushing there and you know she was a part of that so they sort of used her for that and you know that i think that's what played into this case a lot if i remember right um i didn't watch any of it but i only know what i could not avoid you know via the headlines where i'm standing around and the radios on in the background or something so you know that's all i really know about it but overall those cases are pretty tough so i'm not sure but i think it's fairly rare for someone to actually well, well, you, you've heard me on this you know, pro- win one of these you've heard me on this program and as far back as sirius xm and i think even as far back as live 105 in san francisco i used to complain about the fact that a man could be accused of something and then he can't defend himself he is just well yeah you know and 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 i think that day has finally come to an end and i'm happy to see it i'm glad to see that guys now have an equal chance to prove themselves in a court of law uh, yeah. and 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 i don't want this to be the de- to the detriment of women who truly have spousal abuse cases uh that are valid those shouldn't be dismissed either but each case should be taken on its own merits uh rather than you accuse somebody and automatically he's guilty that's what bothered yeah. me I felt felt that if somewhere along the line some woman had accused me of something like that, what I can't defend myself. What do I do? The more I deny it, the more guilty I sound. You hire a lawyer. Hire a lawyer. Yeah, but it, it was a terrible. By the way, to people who may only be hearing part of the show, it's because I just started the audio portion of the show. Wow. Well, tonight I had problems starting the show, and so when I came back on, I didn't stop to think that I hadn't. You know, I hadn't turned off our, uh, uh, our uh, uh, what do you call it, our, our uh, audio oh, yeah. service, and then turned it on over here and wasn't recording the audio. But uh, I'll, I, after, I'll, I'll go back and probably fix all this after the show. But all the video got on. Hmm. Um, no, I just think that it's time. I mean, I, for years I've been griping about this, that... I, I honestly believe that women uh, have, have not been believed for many a year and that they deserve to be believed, but not to the detriment of the guy. In other words, every case should be taken as a case on its own. And this jury, I think, listened to this case dispassionately and without airing to celebrity. I mean, immediately after it was over, Amber Heard said, well, he won because he was a celebrity. Well, what is she? You know, Nothing. She, no, but she's a celebrity. Right. You know, she had that celebrity advantage as well. Um, and I would say that he is, I mean, I don't know about you, but he's at a point in his career where I don't <laughs> think he's uh, really that big a deal anymore. You know. You know, so as an investigator, I investigated a lot of rape, and some of it was spousal rape. Yeah. And a lot of women are embarrassed by it uh, and don't say anything, mm-hmm. you know, uh, early on uh, when it would be a lot more easy to prove. Sometimes it's years later. 
and that's unfortunate that they don't feel that they can come forward but you know society is kind of you know made it tough on them you know when the, when things have happened but the flip side of course is is it really true is she pissed at him for some reason and just wants to get back at him by saying he raped me uh, I think that um, the problem has been over the years is that guys have been abused by their wives and have been abused by women physically but they're ashamed to talk about it just like you say a woman doesn't want to bring it up for one reason or another men are kind of ashamed of it and won't admit to it you know so this, this becomes a uh, uh, I think a very um, uh, Im important thing to remember uh, guys are ashamed to say hey a woman beat me up or I let a woman beat me up and and as a guy I can tell you I don't I don't hit women my father told me you never hit women he raised me and said you're always polite to women and you do this to women and so on and so forth and uh, oh there she is there she is <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what you get when you have kids is the garbage all the leftover food all the leftover food what is that she ate, she ate everything she wants to with the ice cream and she gives me the rest oh i see that's very very thoughtful of her <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to waste <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, it is waste but you know i mean guys uh i mean oh, I, good, but anyway I, I but i have had women who have, have hit me and and uh, been violent towards me. Yeah. <laughs> I need to lock the door. In Hold fact, on. there's one of them right now. Yeah, one. Some guys don't want to strangle her. <laughs> hey. <Ow>. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this is child abuse, I tell you. It's child <laughs> abuse. He's getting big. She's grown. Yeah, so I could be, it's going to be pretty soon he isn't going to be able to turn her upside down like that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But anyway. Did, did she have any proof in her op-ed? Did anyone read that or did she basically? I mean, my understanding was her op-ed basically just said I spoke out and everyone gave me a hard time. Yeah, but she was, she didn't name him by name. But, okay, but I didn't the, know but that. But there so. is such a thing. Actually, as, I didn't read it. There is such a thing as secondary defamation. Just because you yeah. didn't mention the person, if, if it can be justly assumed that people right. do know who she's talking about, yeah. and it's, really called, then it's then cost him work because of what she wrote, then it's defamation nonetheless. You know, yeah. you can't claim yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mention his name. I mean, and I get that, you know, an opinion article is an opinion article, um, but I sort of see, you know, something like that a little you know different you know because you're not necessarily you're not really sharing a, a an opinion mm -hmm. you're sharing an experience and some of their opinion articles are about that but i don't know i you know i think that it was odd that they they sort of let her make those kind of accusations i guess in, in a newspaper like the washington post or whatever well i can't, I can't I mean, remember what to me i, I guess i can't remember what newspaper it was in but you know. it was in the washington post <clears throat> But they've reposted it again today. I have a subscription, and it's on there again yep. today. They they've reposted it for you to read again today. That that's where I read it too, Josh. Yeah. So you know, I I don't know. Sometimes they pay for those. I I don't know. If, you know, if they pay. Op ed, I don't but, think so. Oh, you mean they pay the know. writer for? for yeah, it. yeah. They 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 have some people that they pay. You know, it's, but I don't know if you do a one off for them if they pay. It probably not. But well, you know, I don't know. They might have. I mean, we we would never know. You know, but. but they uh you know i i mean you know like i said they, it's it's reposted today which i think is odd considering that i i, I thought it was at the heart of the matter wasn't it was yeah. that yeah yeah you know but i i was just on their home page and it's like the fifth most top story or something i mean i i, I guess so um you know I, i'll go back and look here in a second but uh you know i thought that was a little yeah. a little uh strange so I'm not really sure how they decided that, uh, you know, that was something that they were okay with. You know, I mean, I, I think yeah, that's kind no. of weird. Or that they would republish it and maybe re, 
You see, and why? I guess the newspaper isn't considered guilty of that because it's an op-ed. Yeah, probably right. I mean, it would be pretty hard to get a a newspaper um, for something like that just for allowing it to be published. You know. See what, what's um, interesting though is that legally, she sued. She sued over an article that appeared in a, the London Mail, I think it was, uh, that was written by Johnny's lawyer. Yeah. And uh, 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 that I couldn't figure out. Why wasn't she suing Johnny's lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, defamation <laughs> is defamation. If Johnny's lawyer wrote it, he could be accused of the defamation, right? But she was suing Johnny for the defamation. Like, I talked about Mr. Depp like I know him. Um, that'll be next week. That'll be next week. <laughs> yeah, the case was in Fairfax County, Virginia, which Virginia. is right across from, from uh, D.C. Oh. oh, okay. All right. Um, beautiful courtroom, by the way. I don't know if anybody saw it, but it was a gorgeous courtroom. I wish mine looked like that. Mine looked like somebody had barfed all over the place, you know. Typical New York City courthouse, you know. Ugly, dank, dark, and uh, nobody covered mine on the Law and Order <laughs> Network or whatever that network was that it was on. I was looking at the numbers. Really, like three million people were watching that channel today. My sister was glued to that. She was when we were at Costco, she was telling me. She was glued to that whole trial. I don't know if I told you, Alex. The, uh, my niece took swimming lessons from uh, from uh, the lady. What was her name again? Uh, for the, the defense, that woman who came up, the forensic expert. She actually is a swimming coach in Forest Hills. She used to do it for free. I didn't even know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it everybody in Queens talk strange like Tony? Yes. No. No, that's just the slang. <laughs> it, de it depends, you know. I, I mean, Donald old. Trump was from Queens, and he doesn't sound like Tony. Right, right. Oh. I, I grew up in Queens. Did you? Oh. Yeah. And you don't sound like Tony. Not really. No. <laughs> well, I have a distinct. I could. I have a distinct. I, I have a distinct to. North Beach accent. Uh, so, is there a North Beach accent? I don't think so. I've never heard of that. No, I've never heard okay, of one. Okay, Alex, there is there is an Italian North Beach accent. Really. Yeah, it's kind of New York. My my grandparents had it. Well, because they're so the whole what it is is the Italians came over and they learned to speak English in New York City, and then they came to San Francisco, and then they talked like that. Hmm. So my grandmother sounded like she was from New York, and so do us a bunch of old Italians, like still in the mission. Well, my mother was from New York. Oh really? And yeah. I'm sure she probably had some kind of New York accent. But yeah. I never got it. And my father was from Germany, and he had a German accent, which I could never hear. But I, everybody tells me you, you could hear it, okay? okay? And I never got that. A lot of times, kids will pick up their parents' accents, you know, because yeah. they're around the house. With, and I didn't get either of those accents. I got whatever this is, which is, you know. Do I sound strange to you, Tony? In any way, do you I sound I do I sound to... regional in any way? Not answering the question. No, I was I was going to get to that. When I first started listening <laughs> to on the radio, mm -hmm. I knew you weren't from New York because you didn't have the hot accent. So you do. When I was in San Fran, you do sound like you're from California, though, like that. Your tone to me, at least. You didn't have that hey. hot New York accent, is what I'm saying. Really? Yeah. Really, because I like I, me and you talk totally different. I've been here my whole life. That's why. Because I felt after I was here a while, I got a New York accent. I don't know. I always felt when I first listened to you, I asked Shecky, he says, I remember messaging him, he says, Alex does it sound like a New Yorker. He says, well, you were here in the 70s, but then you left. So you, it's like you, you change axes in between people. I ask Shecky, I, can I ask, ask you a question? Well, ask. Yeah, he does say I know that. what he means. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Well, he, want, he wants to, to <laughs> he wants some information, but he wants to kill me first. Right. He wants he to, wants to, to ask, ask me. You. No, but you don't have the hard New York accent, is what I'm trying to say, really. No, because I wasn't born in New York. Right? Yeah, you know, but like, I I can imagine like Jeff. How long has it been since you've like been out of Queens? Well, Probably I mean, like, like 30 for years instance, oh, um, uh, uh, Charlie, you how long you lived in Texas? Most of your life, years. right? Oh, almost fifty years. 
Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, when you listen to me, do I have an accent of any sort? No, you sound kind of Midwestern to me. See? Yeah. 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 yeah I can. Perfect, I, I, perfect example. Like a perfect example. Alex. A friend of mine moved out to Phoenix. My friend Pete, he got married. Mm -hmm. He called me up. We're staying in touch now. He lost his New York accent totally. When I talk to him, he doesn't sound the same. He's been out of New York like about 15, 20 years. It's well, gone. So he got you, educated you, when he left New York. I'll tell you what's you infectious. He's, I'll he's almost as smart as you. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what is infectious. Right, just this close. <laughs> I'll tell you what is infectious. Yeah. My ex-wife, Ronnie, when we moved to Texas, she came out of Texas with a, with a Texas accent. Mm -hmm. That's a very yeah. infectious, am I right, Tony, uh, uh, Charlie? It's a very yeah. infectious um, um, accent. And uh, It's not just Texas. I think all through the South it's like that because I lived for three and a half years in Mobile, Alabama, and there's a distinct accent down there, uh, too. Yeah. Well, I think part of the reason accent. why is that, it's a, I don't want to say it's a lazy accent because that would be, demeaning it but it is a rather casual it's a slower more yeah. uh, uh yeah, you're more laid back like laid back i think accent. in texas they don't ax as many people <laughs> <laughs> no they don't y'all yeah. they, do. they shoot them they shoot them yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. i'll tell you the, the, tr the thing is somebody once said the most uh, um, uh, perfect accent in america is the true American accent is the Southern accent? Really? Yeah. 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 Y'all. You know, um, there's so there there's an island in Virginia. I can't remember it, but the, the name of it. But there are people who live there, uh, are, are are like descendants of people who came over from when Shakespeare's time, and they've hardly left. And if you listen to them, they sound sort of Southern, sort of British. It's really mm -hmm. interesting. Let me ask Kevin. Kevin, did yeah. you did you pay any attention to the Johnny Depp thing at all, at least towards the end here? No, that's when I kind of bailed out of it. Oh, you mean I you watched were... it for a day or two, but that was about it. Yeah, it's yeah. Not boring to me. Well, did you when you heard about the verdict today? How did you feel? I didn't hear about it till just about an hour ago. Oh, on this program? No, it was <laughs> before that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> You know, I just I just think that it's a more important. It's less trivial than people would like to make it out to be. Yeah. You know, and I was I was just I guess I was more amused at how many people were outside that damn thing, just acting like it was a circus. Yeah, outside of a Hollywood restaurant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, screaming at him when he was driving away and all that crap. I, I, I don't understand that kind of crap, but I guess. Well, I've never been able to understand. I've never been able Making to Making signs and all that stuff. Ch Charlene, yeah? Wasn't like, remember Michael Jackson was on trial or something, and he had a spectacle like that? I yeah. think he did, come there. actually. Yeah, he did. Well, yeah. they all do. I guess people don't have nothing Hey, else. Uh, how about, I, I imagine the O.J. Simpson trial. It's celebrity mongers. O.J. Simpson. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and that yeah, was a different too. situation, though. That was a murder case. Yeah. You know. And he was guilty and got off. Well, could now, you uh, how is he? Wait thing, a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> you live in America, don't you, Alan? I do. You believe in the presumption of innocence if you're not proven guilty? I do. Then why don't you presume uh, O.J. Simpson uh, innocent? <laughs> I don't, he basically I don't admitted it. Presume he's innocent. Oh, yeah. No, he, he, did, did he it. never admitted it. No, he right. didn't. No. Did it? No, he never. What was the book? He wrote a book. He wrote a book. It was actually published by if and I edited by a dear friend of mine, Judith Reagan, and it was called. It was brilliant. It said, "If I did it." If I did it. Yeah, and what the premise of the book was: If I did it, this is how I would have done it. Oh boy. Okay. But it didn't. He was not admitting to his guilt at all. Ah, yes, yes. Have left the glove so guilty. This is for Alan. You know why he got off? Because your cop Furman, everything he said was bullshit. Because he lied on the oath. I'm going to speak nicely to you. So whatever we, he said, because he planted evidence, got thrown out, yeah, and they lost the case because of the cop. It, it wasn't my cop. It was in Los Angeles. Oh, but I, I mean. But I. But I agree with and you. And that's why he got off because he, he lied on the evidence. stand. And, and planted evidence. 
Yep, absolutely. I truly well, believe that. Here, 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 here's history. the interesting thing is that the two trials in our lifetime that have gotten a lot of following have been OJ and this thing. Okay, and the two mm -hmm. couldn't be more dissimilar. One's a murder case, and the other yeah. one's just an argument and, about. And the Michael Jackson molestation thing was a. Yeah, that got a lot of attention. Yeah, it got, a, got a, lot a, lot of attention. a lot of attention. But I don't. The think Menendez they... brothers, remember those? Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, that that was was brother. Brother. yeah, but you know they didn't. They didn't. They're not. They just the, killed their parents. They may be in the top ten, ten, but they're not up there. Aren't saying that they didn't do it now or something? And you know, I don't know. I heard there was like a new thing going on, or. That they didn't do it or something. I don't know. I don't know much about it, but and there was the Scott Peterson trial. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Out here, I think it was out here mainly, though, Ray. The Scott. Peterson. Oh, okay. Well, you they know, say uh, Scott uh, Peterson might not be guilty either. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You've got that problem too. You've got that one, which I think there's a good chance he might not be guilty. But I agree. I think why? he might not have done it. Scott why? Peterson, in case people don't remember, was this very important case back in the San Francisco Bay Area where Scott Peterson was accused of killing his wife and drowning and her in the bed. Baby. And unborn child. And unborn child. There and were witnesses who saw her running, uh, more than one, when she was supposedly dead in the water. Yeah, really? so, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah I, and, and the guy is on death well, row. Well, just check it out. His you know. credi their credibility wasn't very good. So, you know, he had never, know. He, he wasn't a fisherman, but he rented a boat that day. And no, then, he only, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so anyhow, he took the boat from the middle of California somewhere where the where he supposedly killed her and took it out into Richmond. And you can ask Bill a little bit more about it because he is a forensic diver and he dove in the area that she was found. He didn't find her, but he dove in there for some reason. You can talk to him mm -hmm. about it. But, but, you know, she, you know, how would they have found her and the baby? Or the unborn child. Okay, here we go. Hashing over a case. I can order miles from where first, they live. Okay, first of all, he didn't rent the boat. He owned the boat. He owned the boat, and he used. He did. Okay. He did I, I like, totally yeah, you're right. There was also. There were also. Anyway, I mean, just check it out. There's some new evidence. Just check it uh, out, Alan. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> you, uh, you know, these two cases okay. couldn't be that dissimilar because the OJ case was a murder trial, and this was. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was an ego I, trial. I, I, I don't think OJ would have got off if it wasn't for Mark Furman lying. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Vernon. Have you guys heard of the uh, Mel Ignato murder trial here in Louisville? No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this guy was accused of murdering his uh, former girlfriend in 1988. Mm -hmm. He got off on that charge, but he later admitted that he had done it. Ooh. And the house that he used to live in was purchased by another another family, and during renovations they found pictures of him torturing her, <laughs> and he went to trial for, uh, uh, for uh, perjury, and served nine years in prison for perjury. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, they couldn't charge him again for murder because that oh, would be double double, double jeopardy. jeopardy. Right. Yeah. You know? So. But it's really interesting because a very famous lawyer here in town defended him on the first trial, but when he came up the second time, he passed. My question is, if you're if you're on trial for your life, let's say you committed, you're accused of committing murder, aren't you allowed to lie if you want to? Okay. You know, what do you tell your client? Don't. Tell well, you well, now that you ask me, I did it, but I don't want to lie. I don't want to perjure myself. You know. You don't have to. Cause you don't have to. You don't have to testify. That's to correct. That's, right. That's correct. Fifth Amendment. So in Georgia, murder's illegal. I'm, I'm That's kidding, weird. I'm kidding you, Vernon. It's funny. Everything it's else Kentucky. is legal. Kentucky. Come on. I'm in Kentucky, not oh, Georgia. Oh, oh, He's sorry. in Kentucky. Kentucky. Can I ask Alan a question? You can ask if you wish. You can ask. Is Phil really? I can't see Phil has a forensic eyebrows. Can you? Phil's <laughs> just a diver. I can ask him tomorrow. We have what a He's listening to the show right now. He just sent me a text. No, I mean Phil's a, Phil's a, absolutely a, Phil, a great Phil idea for a scuba diver. Shark, either that or outside, he's either a diver. A he, he, he swims with the fishes. He, he's either a diver or a flotation device. One or the other. <laughs> I mean, the picture behind me is Phil took in the water. I put his camera. He does. He's not. He's not that diving thing. with the sharks inside a cage. 
He's out with the outside the cage and touching the sharks. Well, that's yeah. a that's a big. He's retained sharks. They were he's a certified sharks. Tony. He's a certified forensic diver. I, why I believe it? I can't. I know. I mean, that's pretty. I'm that's pretty a big good. misnomer, though. That. Uh, uh, that, right. that well, that, that sharks necessarily will attack you and eat you if they see you not in a shark. Cage. Not in a shark. What? What? What's that? What's that? What's the picture? It says, "I love you with all my heart." Uh, Ooh. It says for Alex from Adrian. I'll send it to you. Oh, oh, wow. And this is the one from the other night that she wouldn't let me show. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Is that me yeah. hanging yeah. from a tree? <laughs> looks like looks like me hanging from a tree there. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so the reason why sharks don't eat Phil is he's Jewish. That's right. Right. He's got a lot. Of, yeah. And he's got a lot of gristle. So yeah, you know. probably. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. This is amazing. We do. Good, good yeah, little show. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Jeff for being here tonight. Thanks to Josh for being here. Absolutely. He'll probably be here tomorrow night, too. He, what can he, he's, care, he's got Josh. COVID. He's got COVID. Uh, uh, oh, Charlie, he's got COVID. thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Sorry, uh, Jeff. Get thank, better soon. <laughs> but, uh, thank you, uh, 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 Vernon. Uh, thank you very much, Adrian, for being here tonight. And whoever that guy is with you uh, is... It, it is right. yeah it just you know we'll wave goodbye at you oh uh, boy uh <laughs> she's gonna be she's gonna be lots of trouble when she gets older just right. make sure you have that baseball bat by the door when the guys no, no, come no, to no. pick her up for a day from phil and i to take care of that yeah <laughs> anyway thank you very much Char uh, uh josh josh thank you very much tony for being here tonight did I say goodnight, Vernon? I did say that. I did say goodnight, Amy. And okay. goodnight to Ray, and goodnight to Charlene. And, good night, and goodnight, Kevin. I didn't hear much from you tonight, but tomorrow night, we'll, if you call, we'll, we'll let you just blabber on. Okay? Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There's another one forming. Uh, right after this program is over with over there at the intersection with Jack Bishop. You use Skype and you call GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Good night, everybody.